In this video, we're going to focus on reactions associated with uh, the Grignard reagent. So let's talk about how to make it. Let's say if we have one bromobutane, and if we react it with magnesium metal, magnesium will insert itself between the carbon and bromine atoms, giving you a Grignard reagent. Now, what you need to know about the Grignard reagent is the carbon that is attached to the magnesium atom that carbon is a nucleophilic carbon. It bears a partial negative charge. Magnesium has is positively charged and its bromine atom is negatively charged. I like to think of it this way. As the carbon having a negative charge, the magnesium as having a positive 2 charge, and the bromide ion as having a negative charge. Either case, you need to realize that this carbon is nucleophilic. Now let's work on an example problem. So here we have an aldehyde functional group and we're going to react it with methyl magnesium bromide followed by H3O+. So what do you think the major product of this reaction will be? So in the first step, the nucleophilic Grignard reagent will attack the carbonyl carbon causing a pi bonds break. And keep in mind, this carbon has a, a partial negative charge, and so it's attracted to the partially positive carbon atom of the carbonyl functional group. And so we're going to get an oxygen with a negative charge, and here is the methyl group that we've added to the aldehyde. So now, in the next step, The oxygen with a negative charge is going to receive a proton from the hydronium ion. So it's going to grab a hydrogen, turn it into a secondary alcohol. And so this is the major product for uh, this reaction. Now let's work on another example. So here we have cyclopentanone. And let's react it with, we'll use the same, actually let's use a different reagent. This time, ethyl magnesium bromide. So feel free to pause the video and work on this example. So we could follow the same process. So the Grignard reagent will attack the carbonyl carbon from the back. giving us an alkoxide ion. And here is the ethyl group that we've added to it. Now, in the next step, it's going to pick up a hydrogen. And so this is going to give us a tertiary alcohol this time. And so this is the major product for the reaction. So anytime you mix a Grignard reagent with a ketone, you're going to get a tertiary alcohol. So now let's move on to our next example. So here we have bromobenzene. And in the first step, we're going to react it with magnesium. And then in the second step, carbon dioxide. And then in the third step, H3O+. So feel free to pause the video and work on this problem. So once we add magnesium to bromobenzene, magnesium will insert itself between this carbon atom and this bromine atom. And so this is going to give us phenyl magnesium bromide. Now, in the next step, it's going to react with carbon dioxide. So this carbon is partially positive, but the carbon attached to the magnesium atom, that carbon is partially negative. And so it's going to attack this carbon, breaking one of its pi bonds. And so now we have benzoate.
we also have the magnesium ion in a solution with the bromide ion. So if you want to, you could write this like this. You could attach the oxygen with the negative charge to MgBr if you want to. But I'm not going to worry about the magnesium and the bromine atom at this time. So the last step is to react it with H3O+. And so the final product for this reaction is benzoic acid. Now let's move on to our next example. So what happens if we mix an ester with a Grignard reagent? So we're going to react it with ethyl magnesium bromide followed by HDO+. Now, when reacting a Grignard reagent with an aldehyde or ketone, you can only add one R group. But with esters and acid chlorides, you can add two R groups. So in this example, you'll see that we're going to add two ethyl groups to the ester. So let's go ahead and begin. So this is going to be the first nucleophilic addition. Ethyl magnesium bromide will attack the carbonyl carbon, giving us a tetrahedral intermediate. And so here's the ethyl group that we've added at this point. That's the first R group. Now, we do have a relatively decent leaving group compared to this group. So we can kick out the methoxide ion. And thus, we're going to get a ketone. Now, this same Grignard reagent can react with the ketone. So it's going to attack the carbonyl carbon, giving us an alkoxide ion. So here is the second R group. But I'm going to write it out for this problem. So this is CH2CH3. And here we have another one. So now the last step is to react this with H3O+. Turning this into an alcohol. So what we have is a tertiary alcohol. And so this is the major product for the reaction. As you can see, the Grignard reagent reacts twice with the ester. It adds two R groups to it. Now sometimes you might be given the reactant and the product of a reaction and you need to determine the reagent that's needed to convert the reactant into the product which is what we have in this example. So what do we need in order to make this compound? So we're turning the aldehyde into a secondary alcohol. And notice that these four carbons were already present. And so what we added were these carbons. So our Grignard reagent will need to contain this group. So basically on this carbon you need to add the Grignard reagent. And so basically all I did was draw what I saw right there and just add MgBr to that carbon atom. So that's going to be the first step. And remember, when converting the aldehyde into an alcohol, you only need to add the Grignard reagent once. So we only need one equivalent of this Grignard reagent. And then in the second step, we simply need to use H3O+. And so that's how you can determine the reagents that you need in order to go from this aldehyde into this secondary alcohol. Now let's work on another example. So here we have an acid chloride and we wish to convert it to a tertiary alcohol. What reagents do we need? So we already have these six carbons. 
what we need to add are these two propyl groups. And recall that when mixing a grenade reagent with an acid chloride or an ester, two R groups will be added. And those two R groups are the same. We need to add two propyl groups. So in step one, I need two equivalents of propyl magnesium bromide. And then in step two, just H3O plus. That's all we need to do. Now the mechanism by which the Grignard reagent reacts with an acid chloride is virtually the same when it reacts with an ester. The only difference is instead of having an OCH3 group, you have a Cl group, which is the better leaving group. Go ahead and try this problem. Let's say we have one bromobutane, and in the first step, we're going to react with magnesium, and then in the second step, ethylene oxide, and then H3O plus in the third step. What is the major product of that reaction? So let's take this one step at a time. So let's take butyl bromide, and let's react it with magnesium. So this is going to give us butyl magnesium bromide. And then in the next step, we're going to react that with ethylene oxide. And so the Grignard reagent will attack one of these carbons. Because it's symmetrical, it doesn't really matter which side we attack. So we're going to add two carbons to our four carbon chain. So we're going to have a total of six carbons. And so on the last carbon, that carbon is the carbon that's going to bear the oxygen with a negative charge. And in our next step, we're going to react this with the hydronium ion. So in the end, we are going to get a primary alcohol. So we have a total of six carbons, and so this is called one hexanol. So that's how you can make primary alcohols from alkyl halides uh, using the Grignard reagent. And so that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.